One end of a light inextensible string is attached to a block P of mass 5 kilograms. The block P is held at rest on a smooth fixed plane, so no friction, which is inclined to the horizontal at an angle of alpha, where sine alpha is equal to 3 over 5. The string lies along a line of greatest slope of the plane and passes over a smooth light pulley, which is fixed at the top of the plane. The other end of the string is attached to a light scale pan, so the pan itself has no mass, which carries two blocks Q and R with Q on top of block R, as shown in figure 4. The mass of block Q is 5 kilograms, the mass of block R is 10 kilograms. The scale pan hangs at rest, then the system is released from rest. By modeling the blocks as particles, ignoring air resistance and assuming the motion is uninterrupted, find the acceleration and the tension. Okay, so to start with, we can consider Q and R as one mass. The overall weight force will be 15 G. We have our tension forces, so this is T, this is T, the weight of the 5 kilogram mass, 5 G. We can resolve that parallel and perpendicular to the slope. So 5g cos alpha, and then 5g sine alpha. And here are the direction of those two forces. So the whole thing will accelerate in this direction. Acceleration will be this way, so that mass will accelerate in that direction. The 5 kilogram mass will accelerate up the slope. Both will have the same acceleration as the string is inextensible, so it doesn't stretch. So whatever speed and acceleration this mass has, this one will have the same speed and acceleration. We'll also have a normal contact force for the five kilogram mass, let's call that R. And again, there is no friction. So now we can consider equations of motion. For the five kilogram mass, we will have the force going up the slope minus the force going down the slope, which is the 5G sine alpha. So force going up the slope minus the force going down the slope that's the resultant force up the slope, that will be equal to ma, so 5a, let's call that equation 1. And then for the other mass, we have the resultant forces downwards in the same direction as the acceleration. So we would do 15g minus t, that's the overall downwards force, that will equal to that mass multiplied by its acceleration, and that is equation 2. So we know that sine alpha is 3 over 5, so here we will have 3 over 5, 3 over 5 multiplied by 5 is just 3. So equation 1 becomes t minus 3g is equal to 5a. That's equation 1. Now we can add equations 1 and 2. So if we add the two things up, the t's cancel because we have minus t and then plus t. 15g minus 3g would give us 12g. And on the right hand side we get 20a. Acceleration is then 12 over 20 g, which is 3 over 5 g. So that's the acceleration, and then the tension, we just rearrange, I'll rearrange equation 1. So tension is equal to 5a plus 3 g. That's the same thing as 5 times the acceleration 3 fifths of g plus 3 g, which is 3 g plus 3 g, and that is... 6g. So the 5s here just cancelled, hence why this term became 3g. And for part b, we want to find the magnitude of the force exerted on block q by block r. Okay, so let's have a look at our diagram. This is the scale pan over here with the two masses q and r. So q sits on top of r. We're trying to find that upward force that r exerts on to q. So that contact force. So let's do that by considering the two objects separately. We'll consider forces that both of those objects experience individually, and then we'll think about what the easiest way to work out that force that R exerts on Q would be. Let's start with block Q. So that's the one sitting atop block R, the one on top. So here is that block. So this is block Q. It has a weight force of 5g, its mass is 5 kilograms, and it experiences an upward normal contact force from block R. Let's call that N, or NR. It's the normal reaction force from block R. So remember that block R is underneath block Q. And then for block R, 
So here is block R. So block R experiences, again, its own weight force, same as block Q would, but in this case, that would be 10G. It also experiences a normal contact force, but in this case, it's experiencing that from the bottom of the scale pan, or at least that's one place where it's experiencing that force. We don't know what that force is, so I'm just going to call that N from P, normal reaction force from P, where P is the scale pan. Block Q rests atop block R. So this is Q, this was R in the other diagram. And if Q is resting atop block R, Q is exerting a downward force onto R. What is that downward force? It's not the weight of Q. If we think about the force that Q experiences from R, Q experiences an upward normal contact force from R. That's the force that R exerts onto Q. So because of Newton's third law, if R is exerting that upwards force of NR onto Q, then Q will be exerting an equal and opposite force of NR onto R. So I'll draw that over here. This is NR. So those are our force diagrams for both blocks Q and R. If we look at the force diagram for block Q, there's only one unknown force. And this is the force that we want to work out. If we look at the force diagram for block R, there's two unknown forces, the normal contact force from the scale pan and the normal contact force from block Q, which is what we're trying to work out. This will be the same as this force, at least in terms of magnitude. They're obviously acting in opposite directions, but the magnitude of these two forces, the reaction forces, will be the same. So it's easier if we consider block Q because Q has, well, one less unknown force, and we don't even need to work out what this force is for our question. So let's do that. Let's consider block Q. We know the acceleration is downwards. The acceleration, as we worked out earlier, was 3 fifths of G. So if it's accelerating downwards, that means that the 5G is bigger than the NR, and it means that the resultant force will be 5G minus NR. So total downward force minus total upward force. That will be the overall force downwards. This must be equal to MA. Mass is 5, acceleration is 3 fifths of g. So rearranging this, so switch these two things around, we end up with nr is equal to 5g minus what we have over here. The 5s cancel, this would become 3g. So minus 3g, so that normal reaction force is then 2g, which is our answer for part b. So just to be clear, we could have also have done this by considering block R, but it would have been much more complex because you would have had to then worked out what NP is first, and that's not so easy. And finally, for part C, we want to find the magnitude of the force exerted on the pulley by the string. So let's again look at our force diagram. So we want to work out the force on the pulley by the string we see from our force diagram that I've drawn tension forces on block P and also a tension force on the scale pan here. Tension is the same throughout the string. There will also be a tension force on the pulley and that will act in this direction and in this direction here. It'll be the same magnitude of T. As you can imagine, this string will pull the pulley in that direction. It'll also pull the pulley in this direction too. So these are the two forces acting on the pulley. So what I'll do is I will draw that below. So part C, let's say this dot here represents our pulley. We experience a downward force of T, a force at an angle parallel to the slope of T as well. So if we look at the angle that we have over here, and if we consider the Z rule, so if I were to draw a line like this and then go across like that, here is the Z. This angle here would be alpha. So that alpha, that's the angle that the tension force makes to the horizontal. So I can draw that in another way. If I put a line like this, this angle here would be alpha. It's just the same as this one. So then draw that on this diagram. This is alpha and then the components this would be T cos alpha, this would be T sine alpha, and they would act in these directions.
Now we knew from earlier that sine alpha was 3 over 5. So cos alpha, right angle triangle, so sine alpha is 3 over 5, that's opposite over hypotenuse. So this is 3, this is 5, here is alpha. Therefore the adjacent would be 4, and cos alpha is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that will be 4 over 5. So we're going to use that when we're considering this component of tension. Now we want to work out the overall force on this pulley. So the overall downward force would be the T that we already have over here, that T, plus this vertical component of tension here. So that T plus T sine alpha. Then we have a force towards the left, the T cos alpha. So I'll continue that on, I'll draw this head to tail. If you want to work out the resultant of two forces, draw them head to tail. This is 90 degrees, this is T cos alpha, and the resultant connects the start, which is here, to the finish, which is here. This is our resultant force. So we need to work out what both of those sides of that triangle are. Let's start with the T cos alpha. So T was 6G, I believe. Yeah, T is equal to 6G. T is equal to 6G. We then times that by cos alpha. So this is 6G times by 4 over 5 which is 24 over 5g, and then the t plus t sine alpha is 6g, that's t, plus 6g times sine alpha, which is 3 over 5. That would be 6g plus 18 over 5g, which is the same thing as 48 over 5g. Now we can use Pythagoras, so the square root of 24 over 5g squared plus 48 over 5g squared. Add them up, square root the result, and this gives us 105.2 newtons, which is our final answer.